Hello everyone, let us continue our discussion regarding immunity. Today we will discuss about development of lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are derived from bone marrow from lymphoid stem cells. They are differentiated into two types. One, those who are designed to develop cellular immunity. They are migrated to thymus and pre-processed in thymus and they are T lymphocytes, you can see here. And second variety, they are designed to develop humoral immunity. They are pre-processed in the liver during mid-fetal life and pre-processed in bone marrow in the late fetal life and they are B lymphocytes. Now, T lymphocytes, as we have discussed, pre-processing in the thymus. Time of pre-processing is just before the birth and few months after birth. There is a hormone thymosine which is secreted by the thymus gland which accelerate proliferation and activity of the lymphocytes as well as thymosine also increases activity of lymphocytes. Now what happens in the pre-processing of T lymphocytes? This T lymphocytes they develop extreme diversity for reacting against different specific antigen. One thymic lymphocyte develop reactivity against one antigen and next against the another. Second thing that occurs during pre-processing is thymus makes the thing certain that any T lymphocyte which is leaving the thymus it will not react against proteins or any other antigens they are present in our body's own tissue. Otherwise what happens? This T lymphocytes they damage person's own tissue. Now types of T lymphocytes. There are four varieties. Number one helper cells which are also known as inducer T cells also known as CD4 cells or MHC type 2. Second cytotoxic T cells also known as killer T cells CD8 cells or MHC type 1. Third variety suppressor T cells and fourth one are mammary T cells. Now storage. After pre-processing is over, this T lymphocytes they are migrated from thymus and stored in the lymphoid tissues. Next variety are B lymphocytes. Pre-processing takes place in the liver and bone marrow. Now types. There are only two varieties plasma B cells and mammary B cells and they are also stored in the lymphoid tissues of lymph nodes, spleen, bone marrow and digestive tract. B lymphocytes how do they differ from T lymphocytes? First is B lymphocytes they secrete antibodies and they pass through humors therefore the immunity is known as humoral immunity. Second is B lymphocytes they have greater diversity than T lymphocytes. What it means? B lymphocytes form antibodies with different specific reactivity. Now we discuss about development of immune response which is also known as development of acquired active immunity which is mainly of two types. Number one that is humoral or antibody mediated immunity and second variety is cell mediated immunity. Now, what is the difference between humoral and cell mediated immunity? Humoral immunity is by B lymphocytes. Here antibodies they pass through humus and they provide defense against bacterial as well as viral infections. Whereas in cell mediated immunity, it is provided by T lymphocytes. It is also known as cell mediated immunity or T cell immunity. It provides defense against viral infection, bacterial infection as well as allergic reaction and graft rejection of transplanted tissue. Now we discuss about humoral immunity. As we have discussed it is mediated by antibodies and therefore known as antibody mediated immunity. Now what is the role of humoral immunity? It provides defense against extracellular bacterial pathogens also against virus which infects respiratory tract and intestinal tract. Also it participates in 
immediate type of hypersensitivity reaction they are type 1 type 2 and type 3 it is also associated with autoimmune diseases types of humoral immune response they are of two varieties primary and secondary response what do you mean by primary response it is the response of body's immune system to the antigen which is introduced to the body for the first time it has long latent period maybe from four days to four weeks and third the response is less than secondary response but this response is sufficient to limit the level of antigen secondary response it is body's immune response to the antigen the antigen is introduced in our body on second and subsequent exposure secondary response is quick and more abundant means large amount of antibodies are produced it is also rapid because of presence of memory cells and memory of the prior antigenic exposure it is because of the fact that immune system is having memory of prior antigenic exposure and therefore on second and subsequent exposure large amount of antibodies are produced now stages of humoral immune response first and foremost stage that is antigen processing and presentation whenever any antigen enters in our body first of all it is phagocytosed by the macrophage and this phagocytosis results in formation of polypeptide fragments now these fragments are bound with the mhc2 mhc2 is present on the surface of the macrophage and this polypeptide fragments bound with mhc2 they are presented to the lymphocyte so you can say that antigen processing and presentation takes place by macrophage which is known as antigen presenting cell second step recognition of antigen by lymphocyte for the recognition lymphocytes they have antigen recognition receptor and these are membrane bound immunoglobulin in B lymphocytes you can see here in the diagram B lymphocytes they have immunoglobulins on their surface to recognize the antigen and for the recognition T cell they have T cell surface receptors this receptors they are specific surface receptor now what is the function of both of them T cell surface receptors as well as membrane bound immunoglobulin they both have specific surface receptors and they recognize as well as they interact with only single type of antigen why because antigen is having antigen determinant site on its surface so they are specific for that antigenic determinant site next step is lymphocyte activation now lymphocytes they enlarge and they form the cell enlarged one which is known as blast cell activated b lymphocytes and helper t cells they are responsible for humoral immunity and when macrophages they liberate interleukin 1 here in the diagram you can see macrophages they secrete interleukin 1 and they cause activation of B lymphocytes and helper T cells now activation of T lymphocytes T lymphocytes they secrete interleukin 2 and B cell growth factor and because of that it causes proliferation of B lymphocytes and transformation of this B lymphocytes into plasma cell therefore you can see T lymphocytes are required for activation of B lymphocytes and it is known as TB corporation next is activation of B lymphocytes B lymphocytes they proliferate and they transform into two varieties of cells plasma cells and mammary cells now plasma cells whenever B lymphocytes are transformed into the plasma cells their cytoplasm expands and 
the cytoplasm is filled with the granular endoplasmic reticulum now this plasma cells are ready to secrete antibodies second form of b lymphocytes formed they are mammary b cells small portion of the activated b lymphocytes they are transformed into mammary b cells these are small sized cell and they occupy lymphoid tissue they remain in our body throughout our life and on second and subsequent exposure of the same antigen will cause rapid and more potent antibody production by this mammary b cells which is known as secondary response we have already discussed now production of antibodies these are immunoglobulins one plasma cell can produce 2000 molecules of antibodies per second this plasma cells they secrete antibodies of single specificity or you can say of a single antibody class primary antibody response produces igm varieties of antibodies and secondary response produces igg variety now next is clonal selection theory it was given by bernard in 1957 According to this theory stem cells they are differentiated into many millions of T and B lymphocytes and each T and B lymphocytes they have ability to respond to particular antigen or you can say each specific B cell multiplies and establishes a population and the population is genetically as well as immunologically identical with the b lymphocytes from which they are produced and this population is known as clone so what is clone it is a population of cell which is descended by asexual reproduction from single cell in the intrauterine life cells with immunological reactivity with the self antigen they are eliminated and this type of clones are known as forbidden clones and if they remain persistent they result in autoimmunity now next step is inactivation of the antigen which is also known as attack phase or effective phase it is by two ways number one is direct attack on the invading agent and second is attack through complement system first and foremost is direct attack that is by following reactions number 1 is agglutination here antigen antibody complexes they form a clump which is known as agglutination and agglutination increases susceptibility to phagocytosis second is precipitation antigen antibody complexes they form insoluble precipitate third is neutralization here antibodies they cover toxic sites of the antigen and neutralize the toxic sites fourth way that is cytolysis antibodies they attach the membranes of cellular agent and it causes rupture of the cell next is attack through complement system it is a system of enzymatic proteins which are named c1 to c9 as well as b and d these are present in the blood as plasma proteins as well as in the tissue fluid complement system acts by two ways number one is classical pathway and second is alternate pathway now classical pathway it is activated by antigen antibody reaction you can see here whenever antibody binds with the antigen it activates c1 that is a complement protein when the c1 gets activated it activates c4 and c2 activated c4 and c2 activates c3 you can say that in classical pathway there is a series of cascade reaction let us discuss here you can see from the diagram that there is antigen antibody complex which activates c1 you can see whenever there is a horizontal line on the 
complement protein that is the active form so c1 which gets activated activated c1 causes activation of c4 and c2 c4 plus c2 which is converted into c42 and c4a c42 activates c3 and converts it into c3b and c3a c3b activates c5 and converts it into c5b and c5a c5b activates c6 and c7 and converted into c5b67 now c5b67 activates c8 and c9 and converted into c5b6789 now we discuss role of various complement proteins you can see here c3a c4a and c5a they cause activation of mast cells and basophils c3b causes opsonization of bacteria and c5a causes chemotaxis of wbcs c5b6789 causes lysis of the cell now again this is just a revision complement activation causes following effect as we have discussed opsonization that is the effect of c3b c3b binds to and coat the surface of bacteria and increases phagocytosis you can see that c3b which is an opsonin it increases phagocytosis by 1000 fold c3a increases inflammatory response by binding with mast cells and causing them to release histamine c5a binds to the mast cell and increases inflammation as well as c5a it is also most powerful chemotactic factor lastly as we have seen c5b6789 which is formed that is also known as membrane attack complex it causes cytolysis next is alternate pathway here it is initiated by binding of proteins in the circulation which is known as proper d this protein binds with the polysaccharide present in the cell wall of the organism for example bacterial or yeast cell wall when proper d or you can say circulating protein binds with polysaccharide it activates directly c3 and c5 and ultimately it attack the antigenic products of the invading organism you can see here this is the proper d as we have discussed what is it it is binding protein in the circulation it binds with the polysaccharide polysaccharide is present in the cell wall of the invading organism and this binding along with factor b and factor d it directly activates c3 and c3 activates c5 which attack the antigenic product of invading organism so this is alternate pathway some applied aspect one is c reactive protein whenever there is entry of any foreign antigen it activates the concentration of many plasma protein one of them is c reactive protein what is the function of c reactive protein it coats the invading antigen and also activates complement system second is interferon interferon is secreted by virus infected cell it is also a protein what are the functions of interferon it forms a protective ring of uninfected cells around the healthy cells and therefore it limits the spread of infection as well as interferon also interfere with the synthesis of antiviral proteins and therefore it interferes with the replication of virus So this is all about humoral immunity. Thank you.